season two. Our special guest for this program is Professor Donna P. Hope. You'll hear the story of how, you know, doctor, professor, you'll hear all about that. But just to remind you that Straightforward is brought to you by the Jamaica Pegasus Strictly Roots Water. We film on location at the Pegasus and we'll tell you about the numerous packages that they have for the upcoming season and to the rest of the year. Professor Hope, welcome to Straightforward. Hi, Carol. Thank you for having me. You're my second St. Jago past student <laughs> this oh. season. Really? Ravensworth rule. Who was the first? Juliet Campbell, the Olympian. Oh, yes. That's right. Um, We're I, very good at track and field. <laughs> and schools challenge and a whole for other things. Academics, sports. Yes. We are very good at St. Jago. All right. Prof, as, uh, when, I, when I posted the promo for this show, uh, there are a lot of people who spoke about you, either who you get to teach courses and who you brought into this program and so on. What has it been like being uh, at the university? Well, um, UA for me has been a journey. So I was there as a student, undergraduate and graduate before I became a part of the faculty. Um, and I was adjunct faculty, part-time faculty. So I've been at UA for quite some time. Um, it has been a wonderful journey. I believe that University of the West Indies, Mona campus, mm -hmm. has played a very significant role in making me who I am and giving me a lot of opportunities so that I can give back, for example, to other people who come along on that journey. All right, so before we talk about the giving back, yes. you have published, uh, well, an extraordinary amount, I think, for one little person in that <laughs> body. You've produced quite a lot of work. Um, tell us about some of your publications. Well, so far I have five academic books and one what I'd call personal publication. I self-published um, a motivational book and I'm working on several manuscripts right now. Well, my first publication in the dance hall, Popular mm -hmm. Culture and the Politics of Identity, was actually a political science study. I did it in the Department of Government at UWE as my master's in philosophy. Um, and it was a work that was very personal to me because I'm a fan of dancehall. Dancehall is very, was very supportive of my own journey. You know, I got a lot of solace and comfort going to dancehall events back in the 80s. And so um, when I came to campus and I wanted some academic research, usually people want to do things like around areas that are of interest to them. So I wanted to do a political science study of power and identity. And mm. dance or culture was the location. And so that work became very important for me. At the end of the MPhil, um, eventually I published a book while I was doing my PhD abroad. And let me tell you, that book has been a bestseller. It was published in 2006. And six, yes, still I remember. Still selling. I know that. Until today. It's still referenced. Yes, still referenced until today. And everyone that I have met doing any work on Jamaica, Jamaican culture, music, everyone has a copy of in the dance hall across the world. In people who speak other languages, people from all over, have a copy of that book. It's a really important work. And I think it really set me on the path that I have been on for quite When I was thinking time. about, you know, this season, yes. and I said, you know, Donna must come on the program. One of the questions I wrote down, is dance order a space or a culture? It's both, you know, because when we talk, talk about space, we are theorizing it in a particular way in academia. Um, but when we talk about culture, we also are talking about the different strands that are a part of it. So sometimes we say it's a subculture, meaning that it exists inside of the larger cultural whole that is Jamaica, um, but would still be connected to it and have um, things that come from the wider culture impacting on it and coming out of it. So my favorite phrase is that dance hall didn't just come out on a spaceship from Mars. You know, it's a part of our society. And so some of the things that it does in a very extreme and graphic way is also suggesting to Jamaica and Jamaicans at home and abroad things about our society and our culture. So it depends on how you're looking at it and theorizing it. So cultural studies, we'll talk about dance hall as a space. Right. We'll also talk about it as culture. And then we do the work around it based on that. You know, Hart just approved a dance hall course that um, Dance Expressions will be teaching 50 hours per cohort. Are you excited about things like that? Very excited. And I have to big up Dance Expressions, Orville, and the team because, of course, they have been doing a great deal of work and have pushed dance all globally. People like Latanya Style and the team at Dance J and all the other people who are doing dance all dance and teaching dance all culture to people abroad, to Jamaicans and all over the world. I have to give them a lot of respect because they have been doing it from the ground up with very little support. Yeah. 
yes, and very few resources at hand. All right, so you know, the dance hall was the first one. Tell us about the others. The second, <laughs> my second book is called Man Vibes, Masculinities in Jamaican Dance Hall. And it's really a study, it's really a study on gender and popular culture. Mm -hmm. um, that was my PhD work, actually. So after I did Inner the Dance Hall, did the work on Inner the Dance Hall, I wanted to drill down because one thing that I found was that Dance Hall was speaking a lot about men and about men's ideas and about male lives, really a lot of very male-dominated discussions. Even the one they're talking about women's bodies is how women's bodies work for and on behalf of men or against well, men. Well, they're saying so much about it. That's exactly. So it's whether it's supporting them or they are you know, wanting to have access to it or they want to control it or they want to tell you how much of it they have or you know, <laughs> they're talking about their mother. So it's always about women's role, role in the lives of particular groups of men. So I went and did a PhD on masculinity. My two fields were gender and popular culture, which is masculinity and dance or culture. I did a lot of work. And Man Vibes comes out of it. And so in Man Vibes, I looked at, I think, six male exemplars, looking at how men fetishize, really talk about themselves and, and idolize different aspects of male identity and what dance, how they do it through dance. So it's a kind of working class Jamaican male discussion. That, that topic alone is for another program. No, but, I'm saying, but I learned a great deal, deal out of I am that. sure. Yes, I, mean, I mean, I got from in a dance hall, because for both of those works, I did a lot of participant observation. So you have to go to locations and not mm -hmm. just go now as a fan. Right. You have to go as a researcher. researcher. And you pay attention and you ask questions and you fast in people's business. And you actually declare when you tell them what you're doing. You can't be getting into people's personal lives without them knowing what you're doing. Right. And that's important because I don't want people to think that our culture is just this appendage. You know, mm -hmm. something that is, you know, like something we just do when we don't have anything else to do. Because that work speaks to a lot of other things, even about our society. Definitely. And about the way that, for example, how our society values or, or undervalues different parts of the society, how people identify themselves inside the society based on what we tell them about. So the society sends you all these signals. Are you a good person or a bad person? Are you more of a person, less of a you know, personhood? You're be who is better than who? Who will get access to better resources? And inside of dance hall culture, people spend a lot of time questioning these things, but also challenging them, you know, ripping it down and saying, we want this or we are trying to build something different. So what were some of the outstanding but um, interesting things about, give me three things you found out about men. Using that, <laughs> using that study. <laughs> I try not to tell too much because as I'm a woman and I'm a working class woman and I, that book, yeah, Man Bias, is dedicated to my son, my grandfather, my father, my mentor and my, my partner at the time. Because for me, these were the men whose um, you know, man vibes, as I call it, held mm. center sway in my life. Um, and so I learned a lot about Jamaican male identity and about how Jamaican men identify themselves. One of the things that came out of that study, which was very important for me, and people talk about it now as if it was always a discussion point, was that men inflate certain aspects of their lives when other parts of the life is not as voluminous. So if men are poor and they don't have access to resources that they can floss out in a nice pretty car, they'll talk about how many baby mothers they have. And it becomes very important to show their males, you know, how strong you are as a man by the amount of women you are. But I could say that's ego. No, but, but it may be ego, but it's also a way because of how our society is very male-dominated, patriarchal. Patriarchal, oh, we yes. We use the word patriarchal a lot, but it also means that not all men have the same power. You see, a patriarchal society doesn't mean that all men are powerful. Some men are powerful. <laughs> Animal and other farm men, style. And other men are less powerful. But oh, they absolutely. expect to have power because they are men. So they you have men. to find the power somewhere. And usually it comes through the bodies of women. Women become supportive. Women become foundation. Women become the holding up. Women become the bearers. There's a lot of things. Male, I mean, one of the things in our culture, you'll realize, Carol, we don't have, for example, a coming of age ritual for men at all. Nothing at all. You know, is Same in the men. We don't have a coming of age ritual for women. How, what, what do we tell our men to look out for as a part of saying you're now a man and no longer a boy? So there are a lot of ways that men have to make up this story for well, themselves. Well, that story is different de de depending yes. on the school you go to. But that's the thing. Because of the society, again, our society has a class, class structure coming right? in the school. So the young men, at the working class men, will have a different set of variables. The gelding and thing is one of it. You can't be a gelding past 25. So a lot of pressure is put on men to get baby mothers early because that suggests that you're a man. Um, you know, gelding is a bad thing. Eh? Yes, man. 
other, other homes might say you go to college and get a degree, so you are now able to provide for yourself and a family. Mm -hmm. So it depends on where you are from in the society. And so a lot of that comes out in the music. Things are changing. And yes, we give thanks. I know. I realize that. Yes. Because they're, go they're going after less what we call traditional things. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, like now there's a thing where academia is not necessarily... Academic studies mm -hmm. is not necessarily the priority for middle and upper, but instead get a craft. But anyway, go Entrepren maybe that's the Entrepre push, ah, that's push that's for the entrepreneurship term. that has become um, over the last, especially the last five or so years, they have been, they have been ramming back down the throats of people. You know, entrepreneurship is the way to go. So many people are coming out and trying to set up their own you know, entity and mm. going for it. So that's a part of it. All right, book three before we take the first break. Book three um, was um, the international reggae. So international reggae is a collection of, of papers, and, and I had been the director of the um, Institute of Caribbean Studies for a couple right. of years. But international reggae comes out of one of the reggae conferences, I think the 2010 reggae conference, and it's a collection of papers. Um, some very important papers in that book. Um, and so we, I pulled together that collection and <laughs> I found out that I have a knack for collection, but doing edited collections, a lot of work, but mm -hmm. we pulled together quite some, some important papers. And one of the things that is in that book is, um, I'd done some work on the dance hall, looking at dance hall and violence. And I have a synopsis of the study results in that book as well. So it was a very important journey for me, but, but um, edited collections take far more because you don't have control over the timelines as if you are the only person writing. Oh, you yes. have 10 or 12 authors and you're banging the heads with a I know. hammer. Yeah, I've, I've participated in collections, but since I honor timelines, I'm, you know, so yeah, I know. We academics, well, she's out, out and stunting as the academic the exemplar, she's done it all. But we're coming up to the first break. We're with Professor Donna Piho. Stay tuned, this is Straightforward. Connect, create, and collaborate in the Jamaica Pegasus's new co-working spaces designed for you. Host your meetings in our office for one or office for up to four persons. Book your private office space today for four hours, one day, seven days, or more, and get free Wi-Fi, coffee, bottled water, concierge service, free parking, discounted meals, and more. Reserve your office space today by calling 876-926-3690 or visit www.jamaicapegasus.com. Back to Straightforward, as we tell you, we're filming live on location at the Jamaica Pegasus. And don't forget, Strictly Roots Water, My Roots, My Water, the official water of Straightforward. And this is Program 3, Season 2, Professor Donna Hope. If you missed the first segment, you know, we're talking about books. We're now on to book number three of six, so far, so far. And before the end of the program, you're going to hear all the wonderful work she's, she has left to do. Yes, um, the third one. So that was the international reggae, right? International reggae, so the collection, collection, right? right. And so you have a lot of different papers in them. I'm trying to remember some of the people. Oh, one of the things that is in that, um, the people who do Reading Magazine, Ellen Curligs and Pete Lane, right. the Germans, mm -hmm. they had done a, 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 an article from One Love to One Hate, talking about the whole discussion about dancehall and homophobia and reggae and the way they connect it. But telling, explaining to us, really, how Europeans, really Germans, what are their perspectives on Jamaican music and their expectations right. coming from the Bob Marley one love one kind love of to, um, yeah. era to what they saw um, that came out in dance hall. So that's a, I found, we found, my students find that paper to be very useful because it allows them to understand from an outsider perspective what was happening and why there was so much pushback against what was going on yeah, in Jamaica. Yeah, quite a decent following in the European countries, areas. Yes. And you'd have been to a few festivals. We're going to touch on that a little bit. I know you have gone to... Um, Rotterdam. Rotterdam, yes. Uh, and there's a whole different level of respect for Jamaican performers in those spaces. Yes. Oh, boy. Yes. Burning Spear and all them kind of people. But, yes. So we're on to number five now. Four. It's four? Yes. No. We you talk... Know, I'm not... You need three. So three? Four yes, four. Boy, my math's bad today. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's too many books. Number four is a book called Reggae from Yard. Right. And it's another edited collection. Um, and again, pulling together several works. Um, 
what is the special paper in it we get from Yale? I'm trying to remember because we have, I have three edited collections, so they kind of fall into into each other. But one follows. I mean, as there's a progression, obviously, because the work would the have work, been right. The work follows, and so. But one thing, one thing is why I really am um, interested in pulling out collections as well is that it allows you to provide opportunities for younger academics and some of your very good graduate students to have their first publication. Um, the first publication that someone on an academic track makes is very important because mm -hmm. it's something they put on their CV and put out there. Out there to so be justified yes, as, as yes, experts in their area. In their area, right. So I'm very, uh, always very um, interested in having younger scholars and even good, very good graduate students published in my collection. So I try my best to ensure that I have even one or two of them. Very mm -hmm. important. All right, so five? Five is Reggae Stories. That's the last one um, in terms of academic work. And that came out in 2018. Um, and that one, I have some, it very, I had the, there's a paper in it from, um, um, he's now a doctor in Mexico, um, who, he did some work on Mexican reggae and reggae in Mexico. And it's, a, it's, it's the first piece of work that we have had that allowed us to see what Hispanics and Mexicans and people who speak Spanish do with our music. Mm -hmm. He speaks Spanish, so we had to translate the paper. And then I went through to make it read good in English. But it gave us a very good, um, important look in that area that we had not done, been able to do before. Would, we didn't have would that paper. be reggaeton? No, not reggaeton, not reggaeton, reggae in Mexico reggae. and Mexican reggae and tells us when it started, how it started, different periods. Christian Lopez, Eugenio Negrete, Christian, right? Um, and he's, that, he's, in, he's a Mexican and did a lot of work. He's also a Rastafari, so it spoke a little bit about that and a little bit about dancehall. Dancehall. Yes, in Mexico. Do you distinguish between reggae and dancehall? Yes, I do. I find them to be related in the same way that I distinguish between ska and reggae or mentor and reggae. There are different genres coming from different. Their, 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 their core period is usually in a specific, specific era in Jamaica, and so it would reflect on that era. And the main themes that would come out of the music would come from a specific era. So dancehall would not sing about repatriation to Africa. Um, one, because it's not Rastafari, but dancehall will sing about Ja, because dancehall is Jamaican, and Ja is a part of what people learn on the ground. So, all right, so aren't mm. dancehall and reggae coexisting now? Yes, they are coexisting now, but I remember Sky is around as well. We have these other forms that are around. No, 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 they're yes. around, but in terms of the creation and the time frame, because you said they're era based. Remember that we have something called Reggae Revival, which is a different, um, uh -huh. it's, a, it's a set of young people who brokered on the, uh, we call it the nostalgic hype of the 1970s, and have revived reggae for themselves. Because, I mean, some of us argue that they are reflecting on, for example, what Europeans would want to see. Europeans, and many Europeans of a certain age, are stuck on reggae of oh, the 70s yeah. and would love Jamaica to be frozen in time right there. Jamaica has moved on and even reggae revival sounds and the themes, many of them are borrowing from the 70s but they have been refreshed by the, the 2000s. I mean, all right, so where would you put like Chronix's mm -hmm. song Tenement Yard? Tenement Yard is a mix of both. The first time I saw Chronix perform was at Sting, you see? The first time I ever saw him on a stage was at Sting. Then he kind of, yes, man, then he was a visitor to, to a thing, long time. And then after that, he crossed over and went over to Reggae Revival. You remember what the performance was like? I don't remember, but he was, he had at the beginning a very, almost like a kind of sizzle, like that kind of thing. Where sizzle oh. is a kind of hybrid with that rasta dance or so, sound, yeah. right? But then he, the reggae, the sound he has is very unique. It's his own sound. Right. And the, the, the music that he performs is located in this timeline, but also borrows from... 70s. Mm. So there's a kind of mix of the metaphors in those songs. But Dance people, all 101, 202, 303. Yeah, but By people, the time we're done, we're going to get a degree in a dancehall, <laughs> right? So, Jamaican right. popular music. Well, yes. But they both <laughs> coexist and they seem to be doing pretty well. And the people are, and what you find that the artists are also willing to, many of them, some of them are willing to collaborate. Right. So you have a package of five academic pieces. Mm -hmm. But then the last one. Reggae, well, yes, the last one. One thing that, yes, the last one is called Chicken, Black Gravy and Such Delights, Life Lessons from My Journey. It's 98 pages. I was going to take a copy with me. I forgot it in the car. 98 pages. And it has me on the cover. And because I call it vanity publishing. I self-published that book because I wanted to speak about who I am 
and sort of speak a little bit on my journey. So it has eight life lessons in it. The first one is called, Who Am I? So you position yourself in your own reality. In your own, yeah. So that you understand how to move forward. You can't be living someone else's life. Everyone has a different journey and everyone has a different set of resources, whatever those are, that they start journey, the journey with. Did you feel exposed or vulnerable at any point when you were... No, I did not. And I, I think because, because we are in a different world right now, um, people are literally exposed in all the different ways you understand that word on social media. They are exposing themselves in, you know, whether they are showcasing their daily lives, almost like a reality show. They are exposing themselves. They're walking naked. So people tell you, I'm a lawyer. And you're on Instagram in a two-piece bathing suit today. No, you mean and in two half pieces? Are, no, this is what I'm saying. The one, and then they are in full black robe the next day. So the world is different. So people understand, you know, you can show different parts of yourself. Um, I, didn't, I didn't grow up in that I'm kind sure of world. I'm sure parts. <laughs> I didn't grow up in that world, you know. But I find young people are like, I'm a lawyer. Respect me. And then tomorrow they are on in Instagram with nipple covers and a little thing covering here. And, they're, and you're supposed to mix those two different kinds of per identities and understand when to respond to each one. So in other words, Chicken Back Grave is really just giving people an idea of who I am yeah. and a part of my really, really difficult journey. And I smile now because I can. And then giving suggestions about maybe what you could learn from my own life. And yeah, but I, 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 I mean, Donna, you have, you have produced enough as, as a template, let's say, for... Is it survival? Is it um, survival? Really? Yes. How you survive against? How you beat the odds? How you win against the odds? Because there are a lot of odds. I mean, when I talk about sometimes I, I start talking and people are like, yeah, because now that they see you here, they're like, no man, she could have never have no exactly. It's impossible. Yeah. Yes. But when, and when you read the book, like people people read it because it's a very small book. Really, it's ninety eight pages and very deliberately so. And there are no pictures in it. It's just my picture on the cover. Yeah, I've seen it. So I haven't read it yet. So when you read it, I have one in the week. When you read the whole book, like people call me after reader and say, okay. Because well, I have stories in it. It has a lot of, I have these things, a story time, and I tell you stories about something that happened to me or something that I witnessed that would have been important. Important yes. to your journey. Yes. Has it, do you have um, recollections does it, no, does it hurt at any point? Sometimes you just say, boy, you know, if I had more, I would have done so much more. Actually, or are you okay? Uh, uh, no, I'm not. I, you see, but that would be bitter. I don't believe in bitterness. Okay. Bitterness is something, bitterness, envy, um, which is jealousy and greed, those emotions, I can't, I, I don't keep those around because those things rot you out from the inside. Sorry, they yeah. harm you more than anyone else. Mm -mm. Yeah. I'm not, I'm, as a matter of fact, I believe that um, the journey I had makes me the person I am because I can see things from a 360 degree kind of perspective. So I, when people come at, like my students will come at me with all kinds of stories. Miss, I couldn't reach class on time because my auntie never did one drop me at school. But the university, we have buses that come to um, Spanish town, why wouldn't you? pause. I said, you know, because the stories are sometimes so vapid yeah. and I would have had to work through a lot of very challenging situations of to course. get a first degree and a master's. So those stories, um, you have options. You do. And that's what I'd say to them. Oh, you know? absolutely. And so the 360 degree perspective oh, is yeah. very useful. That's an important work. message, you know, Donna, because mm -hmm. I, I, I find some of us play the victim. Oh. Even although we reach up at top you know, we continue to play the victim, which, and then they're sad, they're unhappy. It makes you very unhappy. I watch people allow bitterness because they are saying, I come from a poor background and it's because I'm poor. I, my philosophy is I'm just, usually if I'm coming for something, I'm coming for something. And if I, my philosophy is if I have to climb over the mountain, dig a hole through the mountain, go around the mountain, trample down the I mountain. I try to lock. Sometimes they don't want to lock it up. Well, some, some, sometimes there's a mountain. If there's a door, no, but I'm trying the door and some, you kick down the door if you need to, but I'm saying. I jump through the window. I jump through the window or one of my friends will cut a little door around the back and come through the kitchen. But you always have to find your own way into a situation that you're trying to get into. And it can't be the same as other people, which is why I'm very concerned sometimes about social media because people think that there's a template and it's a standard. You know, we all are standardized people not true. We all are different and we have different access to resources. So you have to make up your own roadmap and go with it. 
So in, in Chicken Back Gravy, I talk about your own roadmap, crafting right. a roadmap to your success and your own basket to carry your own water. You okay. have different variables in life. So oh, dear. Yeah. And by the way, she really can cut through the door on the back now because she's left-handed. She's <laughs> very special. I don't know why members of my production <laughs> team are showing their hands. Anyway, we're taking a break for segment two. We'll be right back with <laughs> Professor Donna P. Hope. So you, you're both left-handed? Sure. <laughs> and Andre, you... On, you're ambidextrous? Yes. See? So am I, by the way. Oh, well, you guys kind of, we can give you a half foot on the <laughs> left hand trap, though. Well, let's, I get, they tell you left-handed people because then it, your brain works, you know, more creative people. Oh. That's what they tell you, creative, yeah. All right, so we're really going to take the break now. We'll be right back. We went on the break. <laughs> because... <laughs> Hi, I'm Carol Bedford, and I'm your host for Straightforward. Season one brought you some of the best acts to follow. We took you to the cricket pitch, the studio, musical stage, classroom, and behind the scenes. Our theme embraces nation building and role modeling. You'll hear stories you've never heard before. Let us take you on that journey. So join us for season two, which is coming up soon. Straightforward, always a step ahead. Straightforward is brought to you by Strictly Roots Water. My route, my water. Straightforward is shot on location at the Jamaica Pegasus, Kingston's preferred hotel. Looking for the perfect weekend? Treat yourself to a relaxing stay at the Jamaica Pegasus with our weekend getaway specials starting at 132 US, now until December. Enjoy a complimentary buffet breakfast, discounted spa services, early check-in, late check-out, and more. To book your weekend getaway, visit www.jamaicapegasus.com or call us at 876-926-3690. Welcome back. We're into the third segment already. When she just came in, she said, boy, we think we're going to have enough things to talk about. Trust me. And we'll leave out some of the things because the behind the scenes things are more exciting. But anyway, we, you know, we have two more quick segments lined up for you. Remember, we're filming on location at Jamaica Pegasus. Uh, Strictly Roots Water, my roots. Strictly Roots Spring Water. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, this is from the hills of Portland. Um, we, we had some heavy rain, and I know they're trying to clear up the water. You have water, you have water at all? Yes, yeah. Okay, all right. All right, so welcome back. Professor Donna P. Hope. Professor, doctor, tell us, tell, tell the audience the difference in your tenured life. In other words, you know, we think doctor is the top of top, but in the academic world, the professor is where it's at. Tell, tell me. Well, um, the PhD, and I have a PhD, you have different ways of becoming a doctor. Some people do a DBA, um, some people do, um, uh, and some people are medical doctors. So there's an MBBS, which is a double undergraduate. It's two undergraduate degrees, a Bachelor of Medicine and a Bachelor of Surgery, and they call them a doctor at the end of it. Um, and dentists also get that. Um, but they, um, I have a PhD, which is a Doctor of Philosophy, and um, once you complete your work and you go through all the things and you defend it, then you are granted the title doctor. And that's an academic title, really, because we use it. Tend, most people who get a PhD tend to go into academia. Some don't, but most of them do. And so it is a part of your journey in the academy. So at a university setting, for example, and once you get into the university setting, we get in, you get a position called a tenure track course. Some people working at the university are not tenure track. They are there as adjuncts, so they are part-timers. Mm -hmm. But you get a tenure track contract, and you work through your tenure track contract. So you start in Jamaica, we call it. Assist, um, you, you start as a lecturer um, in the USA, say, and a so, an assistant professor, it's the same thing. Then you move up based on you are assessed, you have to publish, you have to teach, you teach. have to go out and make presentations Tears and all sorry. of that. And you are eventually promoted to a senior lecturer crossing the bar. We have all these things on campus. Then you promote to a senior lecturer. In the US, they call it an associate S professor. professor. Right. right. Um, same, so it's assistant professor, associate professor, lecturer, senior lecturer. Um, and again, promotions are based on your publication, your work. And, you know, we have to also do administrative tasks. You are on committees. You have to deal with your graduate students doing their masters and PhDs, all of those things. Um, lots of reading, grading, teaching, and all of that. Um, and then eventually, you, publications are very important when you're moving to oh, the Oh, yes, to and the you have done. 
You have been on the road a <laughs> so lot. It's not just books, you know, we have to do. I have a lot of journal articles. Yes, ma'am. Um, and book chapters. Mm. And I write sometimes for the newspapers. Uh, and um, so we do a lot of writing, a lot of writing, coming out again of your research. So you do the research, crunch it, a lot of writing. And then you are assessed. That is the hardest assessment for the um, professorship. For the senior lecturer, they send you stuff out for external validation. So once you are put forward, they send three pieces of your work, I think, for external validation, and then it comes back, and all kind of committees. For the professorship, higher level, so your publication record, your teaching, your public service, your work in the academy. I was the head of department and all right. of these things. Worked on several conferences, a lot of work. And then it, that's a longer process because this is no, uh, not just at the campus level, it's at the university, university level. level right. Right. So this is at the university level, across all campuses. We have four campuses, um, three um, physical and one virtual. Now we have another one as well in um, Eastern Caribbean. So um, we, we, are, we, we go through all of that and it is sent out once it passes all the different levels. Then it goes to an externally sent in five pieces of work. So I had to submit a box. Um, with, uh, I think, five copies of each piece. So it's a whole box of stuff. You copy whatever is to be copied, and if it's the books, they send them five copies of the books. So they give you back at the end. And then they send them out to people. They find people to assess your work in your area, and based on the reports that come back, they have to go to another meeting at the university, and you are awarded. So my professorship was awarded in October 2017. Um, wow. Right. The, the um, announcement was made until the following year because of the, you know, the bureaucracy to get the documentation through. Um, but it's a lot of work. And so not everyone gets to professorship. Um, so we, we value what, because it means something in Yes, in because we have done a whole lot of the, work. In the, so most, all the people who are professors. And some people, you, we, you can become a professor without a PhD, but the universities are moving away from that because of the ranking. So the university wants to have a particular ranking globally in the top, quote, top 3%. Sense, you have right. to have more PhDs, um, people with doctorates on your, on your staff working in the um, teaching areas, especially research and teaching. So that's a part of it. But it's a lot of work. And, um, you have you, said that like four no, no, times. No, but I'm Donna, what no. motivates you to keep going though? Carol, honestly, I've been reading since I was two. I love books, right? I love, I mean, the two things I spend the most money on are books and shoes. I like shoes. They dry rot, but I like shoes. So I spend money on books and shoes. I mean, I end up sometimes buying the same book three times. I give them away to my students if I find that out. I spend a lot of money on books. You still read I physical read, Yes, books? man. I own, I mean, they told us that I bought Kindles and whatever. I give them away. I use a laptop and a phone. I don't, I can't manage the extra stuff. So I give them away to my family and others. I read physical books. There's something about paper. Yes, I do down too. On it. So I have the Kindle app and I still buy books on Kindle from Amazon. I read it on my tablet. My tablet flips over. So I can read it on my tablet. <laughs> you know the tablet that you can, the yes, convertibles? Yes, yes, the, yes. The laptops, right. So I don't want another device. It's too much work. But I read, I'm a Stephen King fan. So I read like, I think he has two books out now I haven't read. I read every book that he has ever read. Even as Richard Bachman, all of the, everything, I love horror. So I read a lot. And so you can write a horror film for us? No, I can't write it. But still, I, you know why I write so much? Because I read a lot. So for you to be able to write, you have to have stuff in your head. Is okay. It? Yes. I'm, 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 I read a lot, and I want to write a lot, but I don't have the time. Anyway, listen. You can use stuff to write. You can talk to your thing. Yes, And then on. transcribe. That's so like you're trying to encourage me to the do something. Otter, the, Otter, um, the Otter app, O T T E R. you can use Otter to help you talk to it on your phone when you're driving, and it will transcribe and send you email, and you can clean it up. You can talk to your phone and record your stuff, and Google has stuff. You I know these things. No, why? That's something. Yeah. No, but it's for, the, it's for the viewers and the listeners who so are it's a, it's trying like, to encourage. I'm encouraging people to do that, because it, not all of us are, because I type very fast. In a former life, I was a secretary. I had to do secretarial work and go U A part time to get my first degree because I you was poor. Young people on a camp so I went to U A part time to do my first degree. I did two four years. So I type a hundred and I can I type about a hundred and twenty words a minute. What's the PhD in? What's the topic? My PhD topic? in my PhD is my PhD is called. Um, masculinity in Jamaica. It's called Man Bad. My PhD is called Man Bad Masculinity in Jamaican Dance Hall. That was what my PhD is called. You can go on Progress and look at it. Yes. Because the US, in the US, they publish a PhD on Progress, you know. Yes, miss. 
So you have to hurry up and make your book so that your book, your, your yeah. intellectual property is Let's take it down a notch, Miss. Miss yeah. Dancehall, I know you actually enjoy uh. the space. Um, what's your ringtone? What's the current ringtone? My current ringtone is kind of dated. It's Vibes Cartel's song, Dance All and Me Everything. That song. Them on play it. <laughs> That's my ringtone. My students love it. Dance All and Me Everything. Dance All and Me Everything. You can dance? dance not for public, for, not for public <laughs> dancing. I'm old school. I dance from the hip down. I'm old school, so I do a lot of Below the waist dancing. Yeah, but and that and that's a carry thing now, you know. I know that. No, well, apart from some of the youngsters now, the flare and I don't. No, no, what happens? What has happened, though, you know, is and I'm. Doing, and my I son is laughing at me. I did some research on that, you know. I have a, a manuscript pulling together. Um, Kai is working with me on some of the transcripts. Everything she does, she does a study of. Dance hall. Everything. No, it's true, though, you know. The dance hall. What has happened to dance hall is that dance hall has changed, so we are not using. We were taught, like people of my age were taught to dance by dancing with the music. What we have is now a this choreographed thing that, you know, dance expressions, you see them. So people teach you how to dance. So when you go into a party, if you're not doing the right style to the dance song, it's as if you don't belong. People like me don't care. I just do what I want to do. No, but, but we are dance like no dancers. one is watching. No, exactly. But remember that today's dance hall, when you go in, People are dancing in synchronized, a kind of synchronized fashion. They're all doing the same moves or trying to do the same moves to particular songs. Yeah, because electrics like Jerusalem and all those things encourage you to dance in. Yeah, but dance all, for dance all, it, it really, I mean, the turn of the millennium, we had a lot of push for that. And coming from the expectations from those in Europe, especially, a lot of people have de developed more and more dance. So the songs are all packaged with dances. So this is the particular dance for that song. So you have to do you have to do your shoulder to fling your shoulder to the song. So the songs come packaged with dances, and people are there to show you, and they are on social media, and everybody is now. So and you find that even people who are not Jamaican seem to be able to dance better than Jamaicans. But if you put on a song from the eighties, that's you see how it works out. No, Always, no, no, we, dance we do we, we do that, and, and when you put it on, everybody is troubled because everybody's like. How do, what's the style? You, just, you flow with the music. You're supposed to flow with the music and allow your body to go with the music. But I actually studied to teach dance. But that's that's really? another. Yes, so I'm you should be a part of the new industry here. Part of? I've done. I've taught <laughs> dance at Edith Dalton. I'll draw a crowd on a the park. Lord me there. Yes. But well, I won was... a Dela Move contest back in the day. <laughs> I did. I actually did. Dela who? Dela who? What's that? Oh, no. and I told my students in class last last academic year. I think it was second semester. And they said, Miss, you have to show us. So I said, All you have, what tell them they have to. All the phones have to be put on the desk, and they have to hold up their hands like that. Go when they do that, nobody will be recording me. I'm not going on Instagram doing Dela move. So they hold up their hands, and I did the Dela move, and because we're playing music. They, they, I mean, it was one riot. Dela move is the one. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> That's Admiral Bailey. Admiral Bailey. And we had other songs around it, but Dela Move was Admiral Bailey had the signature song. I won a contest for Dela Move. I All can right. help myself. <laughs> I'm sure you can. <laughs> Boy, you know, we're coming up to the last segment. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to get into Donna's personal life. Just a ton. Some of the things she can do, some she can do. She can cook, she have dogs, she have all kinds of things. Stay tuned. You're still listening to Straightforward. We'll break. Welcome back to Straightforward. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching, wherever you are. Uh, Professor Donna P. Hope is still here with us. Yeah, my team is laughing after me. I've had an extraordinary long career in radio. And every now and again, I still have the people for listen. But do need for watch? Because this is a viewership. <laughs> anyway, Dee, listen. You have done all that academic work, but you still have a life. I do. Yes, and I know you get around, you visit, you tour Jamaica, you tour the world. Where's your favorite place to go outside of Jamaica? Berlin. Is I really love Berlin. Yes. Did you go to the 
What was it in Berlin? Did you have you been to any track meet or football? No, I haven't been to any track meets or football, but what kind I, of sports do you like? Um, well, I am not really a sports sports fan. I watch World Cup when it's World Cup. I watch the Olympics when it's Olympics, and I go to football matches. So I suppose football is, is well. I love track and field because I'm. Yeah, you went to St. Diego. And yes, and I, the bodies, when you see the bodies moving against time, but I watch, when it's World Cup, I watch from bodies the start to the finish. Time. That's so yes, bodies very against scientific. time. Trying to defeat time, that's what they're doing, you know, it's always time. <laughs> Break tell records. me that's. <laughs> you know, you, you know that's scientific. So there's no sport that you love that you'd always watch no matter what? No. Or any athlete that you love, like? No fan, you're not a fan of any. So, not in that way, not in that way. When it's World Cup season, I'll read all the, read up, go and read up on the leagues and read up with and then read every team and do, and just for, just for the World Cup, just for that one month. That's what Who's I do. Who's your favorite person? Um, you mean? Generally. <laughs> can I, say that? I can't answer a question like that on you. My favorite person is my son. No, 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 I don't mean it like that. Who's, uh, which, which celebrity are you impressed by? I love you saying Bolt and it's not because he's Jamaican. Um, it's because of how he is able to walk with kings and not lose the common touch. So he's able to ride and whistle and balance. I really admire that about him. Um, how he, and how he's able to manage the celebrity and the move, the very swift move up and still hold himself together. Because it's very difficult to do that, you know. Oh, yes. Like madly difficult. And I really admire and respect him for that. And he's living his life and doing it as best as he can, the way he wants, even with this glare on him, that huge glare on him. He's doing, I really admire that about him. All right, so based on your life and where you are and where you're going, which, which Hollywood, which, which celebrity would play uh, Donna in a, in a film? <laughs> if we were to do a film on your life, who would, who would you want to star as you? I have never thought about it. Really? Mm -hmm. You know, see nobody out there I've, who... Well, I've never thought about it, um, and... Uh, I've never thought about it, and I'm not even sure who at Hollywood I'm following now, because I'm watching a lot of Netflix, and a lot of the stars, the Netflix stars, are not necessarily the people we see in Hollywood. Right, right. So I'm, I'm doing a lot of Netflix, a lot of binge watching. It's fun, you know. Oh, by the way, she's on sabbatical. Just in case, she's she's not teaching at the moment, but she's writing. She's, you, yes. She's, I, yes, I'm on sabbatical for this academic year because I'm co finishing a couple of books and drafting a couple of manuscripts. Finishing a couple of books, drafting, and you see how she looks fresh. What do you do when you're not doing anything academic or writing? Honestly, and, and, and this is what I do. My, I, I have a yard. I have a little house, and it has a yard, and I have a dog. I raised a dog during COVID. He's really big now. Just above my knee, four inches above. He's mixed German Shepherd, Belgian Shepherd. So I spend a lot of time with my dog and my garden. So I go, I, when I'm not academicing, I have on academic a cap. Thing, I learned a new word I have on a cap, <laughs> a shorts and a t-shirt, and I'm in my, I have on gloves that I'm in my garden, in my crocs, running up and down, digging up stuff. I'm collecting bromeliads, and also I have a whole bromeliad collection, which is one of these plants, spiky leaves. Good with the desert time that we are going into with the drought, the strong drought, they do very well in drought kind of conditions. You know what I'm, I'm listening to, yes. right? It's not like <laughs> me, we we'll go there and try and pick something. I'm just saying, or the ordinary person, and said, I'm going to try. No. She know that it operates in a desert time. She knows. Research, research. Yes, research. I know. By the way, um, my production team says Taraji P. Henson. Okay, well, thank you guys. See? They, yeah. they, they would follow that. And I'm watching your hairstyle and I'm seeing Jada Pinkett. I used to have locks. We know that. I'm course. telling them, so they have to remember that too. You have to have the, the natural hair, then the... Yeah, I've been wearing lots of natural styles Yeah, but that's why they have wigs of all kind and things. So the locks. So Tara, you're Jada Pinkett. All right, by the end of the show, no. we'll take the photo and see who. Yes. Jada. Yeah, so you're gardening, you're walking dog. And I cook. I love, <clears throat> I cook a lot. Um, I, but I mean, I cook a lot. So I cook, especially on a Sunday, I cook a whole heap of food. So I really love cooking and experimenting with food. And I bake. I like baking. You eat meat? You eat? I don't eat red meat anymore. I don't eat pork. I don't eat beef. I only eat chicken and fish and all the nuts and green stuff. I, I gave up pork in 2017. I had a very good friend who died of cancer. And my mom died of cancer. So I just like... I'm done with pork and all of the, anything that comes from pork. And I don't eat beef. But I'll eat a patty now and then. I'm still Jamaican and patty has eaten beef. But I don't patty eat is beef. synonymous with Jamaica. So I eat patties now and then. But I don't eat beef and I don't eat pork. 
mm. chicken and fish and seafood. I eat seafood. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, what, what kind of music? What other <laughs> kind of music you listen to? Country and western. Oh dear. No, no, who you go from dance hall to country and I'm western? I'm Jamaican. I was raised up with Kenny Rogers and these things. I listen to country and western. I'm old school. I, the Jamaicans are very eclectic in their music taste, you know. I call them an eclectic. No, but it's true, though. Academic. I love country and western, and I love some of the alternative kind of sounds that we have now. Yes, like, you know. You know, when you add up all those things, you know, you have a, anyway, I mean, uh, so, I'm so she's I, eccentric. And I, and I listen to, I, I like, used to love R&B, um, especially uh, Brian McKnight, that kind of thing. I love like that. Like a bump and grind, kind of? Mm -hmm. Yes, I like, because it's soothing. It's not about lovey, love it. The sound is very soothing and they sing nice Well, that music thing. allows you to dance from your waist down. And I dance from, I'm old school, so I tend to dance from my waist down. I love the moves that the guys are doing, you know, like this. I have to think, because I have to think the move in my body. I just need to move, so waist, we are, we are black people. Waist down moves tend to be my thing, but yeah. So I listen to music. I listen to a lot of music, but I listen to lots of loud dance hall. When I'm writing, loud dance hall, like really loud. <laughs> you use a headset? Sometimes. But, mm. I mean, I live in a house, it's not bothering, I'm not attached to anybody, so I can play my music very loud. And I have an office on campus, which I haven't seen for a few months, I need to go and visit it. Mm. Yes. So cook. Ah. I so cook yes, a lot. And academics I bake, can cook. And I bake Christmas cakes. My Christmas cakes, are, I mean, my fruits have been soaking in the thing for a couple of months <laughs> now. I have a whole set of tools, yeah. Okay. So I bake a lot. I'm placing an order for a two-pounder. <laughs> I bake, I cook, I really make really interesting and very nice dishes. So you're domesticated in addition to being... There's an idea floating out there that professional women and academic women can't do anything. So I try not to focus too much. I'm not going to show my meals on Instagram. I don't do that. But I take pictures of them because they are really beautiful. You know? Um, uh, we might see it in a book one day, right? <laughs> Maybe. But, like, so, but, but I do cook a lot and I experiment with foods a lot. So mm. I really, yeah, all kinds of stuff. If you, if you never took this journey in terms of culture, society, gender, we never even talk about the thing where you create, the, the dance hall archive. archives. Uh -huh. Boy, you know, we, time as is, usual, yes. it's the time. But when you're not doing all of that, um, what do you do? You mean when I'm not doing all of the other things? Yes. Well, if, if we were to send you out, uh, if I were to send you somewhere now, where would you want to go today? Someplace different, someplace unusual. In Jamaica? No, it no matter anywhere you want to go. Mm. Is there any place you've wanted to go that you didn't get to go, that you'd like to go? I have not been to Las Vegas, and I want to go to Las Vegas. Really? Yes, man. At each time I plan a trip, I don't get to go. I need to go to Las Vegas. I want to go and see this trip and all of that. That's one thing on my list. I haven't been there. Um, but, Can I mean, you ride a bicycle? I tried it when I don't like things that are too much. So I fell off when I was a child and scraped up myself. I never went back on that bicycle, so I can't ride. And I'm not trying to learn. I'm not. People say, we'll teach. No, I don't want to learn to ride a bicycle. Can't soon? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that means you can't ride a motorcycle then. I am not a fan of motorcycles. They have a thing on it that I, but I had a friend once who had a motorcycle and I went on it wearing a skirt and threw my foot over and the muffler, gave me a big burn. I don't like them because of that. You know how much girls our age have muffler burns anyway? Yeah, something I never, <laughs> let me, I never, there was a friend of mine in Lindsay called Pinky, he migrated, he was very hype and carrying on, and he had a bike, he goes, let me give you a ride home, and I'm coming from work, and I just, you know, pink, and I just throw my foot over the bike, and he's like, don't, don't, Too late. Too late. I, I came off the bike, I didn't go on it, and I never, I don't like bikes, they're a dangerous thing. Can not climb tree? Of course. I'm from the country, I'm Lindsay, I come from I drop out on a tree and scrape up and go bird bush and shoot bird and had a brother, no sisters. Ah. So I had always the roaming road with the guys. Cowboy and Indian, I did all of those with things. With our left hand, so she moved the other way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I still have that rural intrigue. Yeah, man. Yes. I got roast bread food out the door and all them things. Still yeah, there. you can, you know, for roast cash up on of course. the zinc. And the, Just yeah. ask. Yes, By the way, let's talk a little bit about St. Jago. What yes. was St. Jago like? Mm, uh, interesting. It was an interesting part of my journey. I went. To, I had a. Go, I got a government scholarship to go to St. Jago. You know, mm. from Lindsay Dolly School. I was the first government scholarship person, so I went there. It was an interesting journey. Okay. 
It was very difficult. That was the difficult part of my journey. Right. Like, really difficult. Because my family was struggling, and then a lot of things happened along there. Remember, I dropped out of high school mm -hmm. with my son. Right. My big right. So it was a very difficult part of my journey. But then one of the things that happened is that I also made lifelong friends. So I still right. have my classmates from San Diego. Mm -hmm. Until today, we have a WhatsApp group. Mm. Yes, ma'am. Very close. All right. When you come out of your sabbatical, what should we expect from the professor? Eh? Well, I have a collection, a vice cartel collection that I had pulled together. And I'm, I think two people still have two articles, from chapters from it. So we're finishing that up. So that will be hopefully in the hands of the um, publishers. You don't want something about sports and culture, I joke. <laughs> so then I also have, <laughs> I'm working on, because my work is on gender and, and popular culture. So I'm working on my mas a book, a masculinities book called Transitory Masculinities. Um, mm. and, and so that we frame, we have most of the chapters together so that manuscript should be ready and then the dance hall, scattered children, the one I did about the, the Europeans and the dance hall, right, right. that is being pulled together I also, I'm pulling, I think I'll be publishing a book of poetry either at the end of this year or next year, um, I write I've been writing poetry since I was like 6 or 7, I have a whole like 200 and 300 pieces of poetry it's 59 40. days for the end of the year yeah no we're like six weeks away from christmas can you imagine can you eight imagine? weeks eight weeks from christmas yes but yeah i can still i can publish a book of poetry tomorrow and i have all the pieces i write a lot of poetry because when i'm sad or when i'm happy i write and i've been writing a journal keeping a journal for 30 years a long time oh dear I'm boy right. ladies and gentlemen boys and girls you have seen <laughs> you have heard the You're words right. of Professor Donna P. Hope. As usual, totally informative. Uh, Donna comes to you with a lot of information. I'm sure she has impacted on somebody's life. And I know when the program finishes, I'm going to get an email. Can we talk to her soon? Whatever, whatever. Um, Donna does TV, radio, she talks all over the world. How you been managing with the thing as we wrap up, the Zoom thing? How are you, you managing that? Well, there's a thing called Zoom fatigue, but we're working with it. So <laughs> we have been doing everything online. So we have Zoom and the different versions. Versions. So we have Blackboard Collaborate on campus. So we have all these weird, but it's just a lot of, if you're not careful, I've had days where I sit in front of the laptop from 9 a.m. in the morning, meetings, classes, or whatever, and at 6 or 7 p.m., you're just, you're trying to get up. So you only probably get a little break to go and eat. No literally way. spend a whole so it's, it's, we're working with it because the best we can do but it's hard really donna hard. it's been my pleasure to have you sit down for an hour to talk to you about exciting stuff life as an eccentric academic and she's still good she can cook wash clean do everything she's a real person so until next time this has been straightforward episode three with professor donna p hope until next time thanks to my production team Andre Jr. and my production executive, Ryan Essen. See you next time. After 46 years, this gentleman continues to fly Jamaica's flag very high. His name is synonymous with reggae, and any conversation, I mean any conversation you can have about this genre of music, his name pops up. Well, I'm talking about none other than Stephen Catcor. He's part of the world-famous Third World Band. It will be my greatest pleasure to have him as my guest on Straightforward. And guess what? He also loves cricket. You'll hear that and so much more when you join us with Stephen Catcor, right here on Straightforward, always a step ahead. Hi, I'm Carol Bedford, and I'm your host for Straightforward. Season 1 brought you some of the best acts to follow. We took you to the cricket pitch, the studio, musical stage, classroom, and behind the scenes. Our theme embraces nation building and role modeling. You'll hear stories you've never heard before. Let us take you on that journey. So join us for Season 2, which is coming up soon. Straightforward, always a step ahead. Straightforward is brought to you by Strictly Roots Water. My root, my water. Straightforward is shot on location at the Jamaica Pegasus, Kingston's preferred hotel. Straightforward, Straightforward. with Carol Beckford, always a step ahead.